Hola y bienvenidos a el Retail Siete Movies. I don't know how much Spanish. <laughs> It's Rachel C at the movies! Yay! Or Rachel C from the couch. We watch Roma, which if you don't know was a Best Picture nominee, is on Netflix. Easy one for this, us to watch. This is a win-win. <laughs> because it was a Best Picture nominee and on Netflix we were like, we should watch Roma. And then our friend Juan... He recommended him? it. Dr. Juan? Dr. Garza recommended <laughs> yeah. like, hey, this is the best movie I saw. I think it should won Best Picture. He also said, well, I didn't see any other Best Picture nominees, <laughs> but I think it should. And I heard yeah. a lot of good stuff about it, most around the, mostly around the cin cinematography. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was excited to watch it. This r movie is about a, I think when I saw the summary on Netflix, it referred to the main, the lead as a domestic worker. Okay. Um, but she's a maid in a wealthy home in Mexico. Set in Mexico during the 1970s. Yeah. And yeah, to me it reminded me of, I don't know, we don't see a lot of these stories anymore on film in that it's a small story that follows a particular set of people over like a certain amount of time. And it's just what like... What movie did we watch recently? Because this was another one of those movies that was like a window or a snapshot in from like start to end and the filmmaker didn't give their opinion or put in an agenda. They just let you see the characters' lives unfold and let it be what it is. We just talked about another movie. Oh, was it an Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> another movie that did this and I was like, yeah, like they totally, oh, um, Cold Pursuit. Okay. Like, the characters didn't have, like, a big arc or anything because it was a snapshot in. Completely different movie, though. Yeah, completely, it's utterly fiction. different movie. Yeah. Um, well, the other one's fiction, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? This one, it I don't want to utterly, just completely different. But it was a snapshot in, and just, like, some of the characters didn't change, like, yeah. throughout from the beginning to the end, and because that's how real life is. Like, sometimes you just get a window in. So I felt the same way in this well, movie. Well, and we tend to... I love those type of movies. I don't want to go to the movies and have somebody clearly presenting their agenda to me. I just don't like it. I think if the story should tell the story, and you don't need anything else around it, or you don't have a good enough story. And well, either that, or like say you have an agenda, well, be creative. So we watched, um, oh, it's just so, this was another Rick Chelsea from the couch. Um, Are you talking about Black Klansman? No, but a movie uh, similar to that, yeah, where he, they turned into it the donkeys. It was a Spike Lee movie. Oh, uh, sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother we you. We didn't do one on that. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I did a blog post on it. Um, we didn't do a, a okay. video. So, yeah, that was an, another movie, but opposite. Big agenda. But, man, that movie was so yeah, good and so creative. that movie was fantastic. That, like, yeah, give me your agenda and be have it be, like, yeah. you made a good content. Like, yeah. it was just so good. Right. So, you have, like, those two, you know, yeah. of the same coin there. Back to Roma. Roma, what would you tell people, Kelsey? Go wait or skip? Well, you can't go see it because it's not at the movies. You have to Netflix the movie. And so I would say definitely, or go to Netflix. I don't know. You should see this movie. This is one of the better movies that I've seen in the last few years. Um, to me, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is an instant classic in that, like, I already feel like this is a classic part of film history. I really enjoyed the story. The cin cinematography is truly outstanding. More importantly, I thought that the characters in the story were so true to life and real and displayed such large facets and different parts of the human experience to the point where I was like, was the lead character, Cleo, was she considered for best actress? Because she nailed that role and it was amazing. That's interesting that you say that because when she, while she was playing that, I was like, wow, she's coming across so authentic that I was like, is she an actress or is she a maid in Mexico? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, does she live That's this she life? Yeah. Like, I, cause I was like, how would you find an actress to play this? I don't know. Maybe we Google her. She'll be all like Hollywood. And yeah, <laughs> like we'll she's have just to see. That's a good thing. I have no idea. 
Um, so yeah, I all I say go see this movie. Go to Netflix and see it. You don't need to wait. I, I also think uh, that it's a good movie. It was shot in black and white. Aside from that, like this, like the way it was filmed was really good. It opens, it has opening credits, which is a throwback mm. to an old yeah. style of movies to have um, like long opening credits, yeah. not just starring, but like long ones. The story, like it was just about life in Mexico and you got like a little bit of like the, the wealthy part. The main part was about this uh, woman, Cleo, right? A girl, woman, I'm not sure what her age was. And that was your focus, but you had the, the the home that she worked in, so you knew that family. You also had what was going on in Mexico at the time, which was apparently pretty unstable. Protests and stuff, and people were just being like killed in the streets like during these, and I don't know much about this um, at all. Spoilers! If you don't want to watch the birthing of a stillborn baby, then... Okay, <laughs> that's a huge spoiler. Well, it happens <laughs> in this movie, so you best be prepared. That baby is dead. So yeah, basically, That's devastating. You, you follow the uh, lead, and from working in this home to kind of just like dating, you know, and living the rest of her life. She gets pregnant. The guy's a, a jerk, it seems like, but also a little um, brainwash. I don't know. Like he seems to be involved in some things that are when they don't tell you. It's such great. Like yeah. when he leaves the house that time, there's like this big scene. And you're like, well, where's he going? Is he going? I, I thought, I was like, is he going to war? Or like, I don't understand what's going on. And they don't tell you. You learn it later. And yeah. I thought, what a brilliant piece of filmmaking this entire this thing was art. This isn't just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like she, so you go, like she's pregnant. She has to tell her employer. She has to navigate like her feelings with that. But again, it's a window. We're not inside the mind of Cleo. So we don't get like. You know, she's not like writing in a journal of all her feelings. We actually like don't know. We're just observing yeah. how she feels. She goes into labor, loses the baby. You know how like sad she is about that. But then later, like she continues through that process. And again, like she um, expresses her feelings of like she was felt guilt, right? Because she didn't want the baby. And then the baby was born dead. And <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, like, yeah, it's pretty devastating. So here's a kind of funny tidbit of information. Before this movie comes on, it says, <laughs> like, okay, this movie's going to have graphic it's nudity. R. Graphic nudity and, like, like violence. And I was like, we have a funny thing in her family in that, Rachel, it affect, those kind of things affect Rachel more because she's seen less of it. And me, I was yeah. like, let's do this. Gra <laughs> graphic nudity and violence, like, as a joke. Anyway, the graphic nudity was just full frontal man nudity for like a long time, doing, which, but, which is funny and, and not sexual. Because like I was, it was, yeah, like, it he was, was doing a martial arts I was like, routine. Great. Like I don't want to see like this. after they had sex like in a bedroom. Yeah, and, then, and so I don't know. As a woman, I was just like, well, this is just pretty hilarious. It was weird. <laughs> and, yeah, there's not a lot of that on film, it and so when you encountered it, I had talked to the big game about like, oh, I, it won't bother me. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this is different. And then secondly, the violence, mostly, or at least was that... The, I think the graphic violence was that, mostly the, the child the, being born. Yeah, completely dead. And then, like, I mean, it is, like, a stirring... I was crying over there. They're, you know, they're like, do you want to hold the baby? Because it's dead, and she's holding it, and she doesn't want to let go of it. And, like, oh, my gosh! Like, I'm over there just like, <laughs> you know? Here's my other thing about the movie that was probably a different experience than what Kelsey had, and that is because it was black and white, I found that I was a little disconnected from the people in the movie. So I am cry I cried now talking about the events in the movie, but I did not cry last night when we watched it. Oh, and it's because I had a disconnect. So to give an example of what I mean by that, um, the wealthy family, she had four kids. I had a hard time telling them apart because of the film was not in color. So I felt like I was missing being able to connect. Like there were some parts of the movie in the beginning of it where I, they had two maids. I couldn't tell them apart because they had the same exact hair. And it wasn't until later in the movie where there was like the scene where I got to see the other girl real clearly. And I was like, oh, they, they look radically different. Or not radically. They look different, just have the same hair. Well, what's funny to me, and it was, I've been thinking about this since you talked about that when we watched the movie, is that it's probably because you're more of a visual person. Yeah. And I'm more of an auditory. 
whatever it is. So it being in black and white had no effect on me whatsoever, except that I, th I thought it was a good choice because the music yeah. movie was just beautiful. And I recognize like the artistic choice and yeah. I, I liked the gradation in the, in the black and white color and gray. And um, I got that, but like, oh my, I can feel it like right here. I'm like, I feel like I miss so much of Mexico. Like this is Mexico. So I bet their home was like had bright colors. Mm. I bet like, I miss when they went to the beach and I couldn't see the sky and the trees and the sand and the water. Like, I feel like I miss so much. And I wonder by taking that out, do they feel like they were taking out a very like specific thing that allowed us to focus on the story? That's what I think that it does allow you to focus on the story. And I get and that. Get but less for distracted somebody by... like me, like it, it was hard for me to see the people. Like I couldn't tell everybody apart and I felt like I wasn't connecting to them for that reason yeah. But it's because I rely heavily on visuals. I mean like I can't even tell you I can't talk to people Unless I can like if I can't see them I can't understand them sometimes yeah. So I have a hard time talking on the phone especially to strangers because I can't process what they're saying because I can't see their faces So my favorite thing about this movie I think is one of my favorite things about a lot of movies is that this movie did a great job of illustrating the most important thing most important thing that we should focus on in the world which is love and in this movie we had a situation where there were characters who had difficult circumstances with various people all throughout their lives but at the central core of the story is a family and she Cleo and the other girl were they were employed by that family, but they were part of that family. It's a different like thing, and totally so totally different culture. But still, the love that was there yeah. within that little unit of people, with the mother and the and the children and the workers, was an amazing thing, a beautiful thing, and even something that I think the power of that love is the redemptive part of the entire story. In that, like, yeah, all this bad stuff happened. The yeah. husband left, this other man did this to you and left, but it's all worth it because of this love. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I think had this movie, I don't know who made this movie, but I'm assuming it's somebody who was Mexican to uh, be able to make the movie like this. It, say it had been an American, um, they might have villainized the wealthy family. Right. And that they was might not have made it about like, well, people with less money are right. better. People with more money are, are not good people. And this movie did not do that at all. It did not villainize the wealthy family. It was just like they just existed. And actually, money wasn't even like a part of anything. It's you just could the be way happy with or without the money. Yeah. Like it wasn't what it was about. The people just lived like different lives, yeah. you know? It didn't make. Uh statements on being, this isn't fair. I mean, some people are born rich, some people are born poor, some people are born black, some people are born white. The unifying thing um, that can unify all people is love. And in this little story, in this little family, in this little place in Mexico, it showed that. And it was really a beautiful dog. <laughs> That's my accent. <laughs> I will say, I'm gonna make a bold proclamation here. Um, I have now determined due to my own in my own mind, that Roma should have won Best Picture. <laughs> I thought that the other movie that we really liked was Star A Star is Born, but last night after Roma was done, I was like, you know, I think The <laughs> yeah. Star is Born was really good, and I think that I'm particularly attracted to the story because of my own uh, family history and my own personal history with addiction and understanding that community. But as far as just pure art, you can't beat Roma as yeah, yeah. Artful well, this is just such a small like. Whereas A Star Is Born kind of had some maybe over the top. Like you knew exactly what it was about, and Roma was so quiet was. that it lit like that central piece of love really just shine. It's gonna on stand the test of time too. I mean, it immediately I was like, this movie could have been made thirty years ago, and it would it was it would be great, and it's great today. I think it'll be great thirty years from now. What also will stand the test of time is you liking, commenting, and subscribing to this channel. I feel confident that, yeah, with Chelsea at the movies is going to stand the test of time, you guys. So you better go ahead and get on this bandwagon and like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, I think the most important takeaway is that as it goes with love, so too is with Chelsea at the movies eternal. <laughs>
And if you're watching this on Facebook, I put the link for the YouTube channel. Click that link. Go like, comment, and hey, subscribe. Hey, you can at least do that. <laughs> at least do that, Facebook. What? <laughs>